Hello everybody, yes, of course it is, it's me, Adam Cleary here, and I've had an idea, it's a small one, it's a subtle one, but it might just fix a lot of what's wrong with WWE's booking at the minute. I might be a genius, sit down. All right, so before I start, I just want to clarify that this video isn't about how, oh my god, isn't New Japan Pro Wrestling awesome, and oh my god, doesn't WWE suck, like that comparison is boring, you guys tell us that you hate it, and it's lazy, and to be honest, I'm with you on that 100%, so it's, it's not that. But, and admittedly, this is going to feel like quite a big but at the minute. Right now, there's something happening in New Japan that WWE should be paying very close attention to. Basically, at the moment, Okada is in the midst of a drastic and unprecedented character arc. Long story short, for two full calendar years, Ish Okada reigns supreme as the IWGP heavyweight title, defending it no less than 12 times, which mathematically makes him the strongest storyline force ever seen in the company. He was untouchable in the ring, extravagant out of it nobody in the world could get anywhere near him and then after 65 grueling minutes which was presented as the fight of his life against Kenny Omega he lost it all. In the two months since that, they've presented him in a very, very different way. He's basically lost both his title and his mind and can't get one back without the other. He defined himself by his greatness and without the belt to do that for him, he can't do it at all. I'm not bore you with all the details, but from a storytelling perspective, it's very compelling. He's currently in the process of trying to get it all back, but he can't do that unless he wins the G1, which is the most arduous and competitive wrestling competition on the planet. Over the course of a month, he has to come out victorious against 20 other wrestlers, and even then, he only gets the chance to win it back. When he finally rediscovers himself, whether that's with the belt or not, he'll become the Rainmaker again. It'll be this brilliant moment for New Japan pro wrestling, but until that happens, we're forced to go on this strange and compelling journey with him. Now, the point I want to make, the whole reason for this video, the crux, the heart of the argument, is this is only possible. This story, this angle, this investment we have in the character is only possible because New Japan don't have an automatic title rematch clause. Yep, that's it. The inescapable conclusion I have drawn from my years and years of experience doing this, and more precisely, the Michael Sidgwick article I am adapting, is that WWE need to bin off the rematch clause forever, and that will fix so, so much. All right, so case in point, say AJ Styles loses the WWE Heavyweight Championship to Samoa Joe at SummerSlam. What emotions will he sell at the end of that match? He'll sell disappointment, he'll sell shock, he may even sell anger depending on the finish, but ultimately he'll be challenging for it again at Hell in a Cell, which at that point will be less than a month away. So... How believable is that? You see, for AJ, or indeed anybody who loses the gold in WWE, it's more of a inconvenience than anything else. They can be well on their way to reclaiming that in a matter of weeks, sometimes even days. Whereas for Okada, it has shattered his entire psyche. That belt which defines him feels so, so far away from now so we can buy in to the emotional trauma that would cause. Whereas for WWE, they can't do storytelling emotionally of that heft because of this rule. The problem is repetition, but it doesn't just stop with the title matches. The amount of TV and pay-per-view time WWE now need to fill means we're getting the same thing over and 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 over again, and it's becoming objectively stale. Don't believe me? Well, okay, here's some maths for you then. There have been 78 pay-per-view matches so far in 2018 between the Royal Rumble and Extreme Rules. How many of them do you think were rematches? On pay-per-view, 34. 30 f***ing four, that's nearly half. When you consider that out of the 44 that remained, some of them then immediately led to rematches on the next week's TV cycle, or were big, messy, multi-man things, or were hastily thrown together tag matches, there is just so, so little to actually invest in. In their defense mind, WWE are aware of this and have tried to address it by rejoining all the pay-per-views back together. That was supposed to fix this problem and stop us getting all this repetition, but guess how many rematches we got on both Backlash and Extreme Rules. Seven. Not between them, each. Seven rematches each on those two pay-per-views. It's not working. And it isn't getting better anytime soon. I mean, SummerSlam is right around the corner, and that used to be this landmark date on the calendar that gave us these fresh, exciting new rivalries and stories and conflicts, and we've already got three rematches scheduled for that. Owens versus Strowman, Ziggler versus Rollins, and Brock 
versus Roman. We're probably going to get Finn versus Corbin as well because, and you're not going to believe this, they're currently 50-50. All right, but back to my main point here, because they're not going to fix the repetition issue across the entire card overnight, but they can at least address the main events, because that's really where it feels like everything's suffocating the most. If they bin that contract rematch clause, that might fix that. Somebody challenges for a title and doesn't win first time, but gets another go, because why the hell not? They win that, but then their opponent wants their rematch, so they do that, but inevitably, there's something not quite right with the finish, so they do it again, and then maybe again with a daft stipulation, and then maybe they lose that. That, they've got to do it all over again from the beginning and I just I just can't anymore mind you and I will defend WWE again here AJ Styles versus Rusev was a perfect example of how to do all of this right you had a heel earn his way into being number one contender and then he lost definitively in a match that was well laid out and entertaining where he succumbed to a far better strategy than he'd brought to the thing and then Styles reinforced by the definitive nature of the win moves on to his next challenge while Rusev having lost a match that genuinely felt like it mattered to him is in the midst of some character development he processed the L and is seeking to grow as a result what a novel novel idea this should be the new norm because the old one simply fosters this regurgitated repetitive booking strategy which sees them do the same thing over and over and over again and then dickheads like us have to stand here and level the same criticisms at them over and over and over again and trust me we are as sick of doing that as you are of hearing it so there you have it one get rid of the automatic rematch clause two fix wrestling a bit three i don't know and four profit let us know what you made of all this by leaving a comment below and of course don't forget to like share and subscribe in the meantime though thank you very much for watching that was many minutes of me just talking at you my name is of course ben adam cleary and i will see you soon bye